Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, let us open our minds and listen to your word with the ear of the heart. Amen. Well, my goal for the sermon was to pick one word to focus on from today's gospel reading. The first time I read through the scripture, I wrote down the words abide, love, friend, and joy. These all seem like positive words to preach about. This would be a great feel-good sermon, right? Jesus chose me to be his friend. But before I made my decision what word to choose, I knew it was necessary to read what Jesus was telling his disciples a few more times. Each time I read it, the word that stood out to me the most was if. If you look back, you will see it is used in verse 10 and 14. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. You are my friends if you do what I command you. You actually read something similar last week. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. How could this word be placed on God's grace? It doesn't make sense. Jesus tells us that we do not choose him, but he chooses us. In my black and white world, this just doesn't work for me. How can Jesus expect us to follow his commands in this imperfect world filled with imperfect people? So it was time to do some Greek exegetical work to try and find a word to use in place of if or discover a meaning I didn't know existed. And when we do exegetical work, we talk about when in translation, sometimes things change. So I was convinced somebody made a mistake somewhere along the line. What I found was that there are several words that can be used in place of if. Things were looking up. I found out, I found out that in Greek, the words that can be substituted for if are even though, though, when, and since. The only one I feel is satisfying is the word since. You are my friends since you do what I command you. For me, this was an acceptable substitution. Since, since it was almost bedtime, I should have stopped at that point, but I kept going. What I read next in the Greek Accordance, which we call dictionary, was that in the case of John's Gospel and Galatians, the word since cannot be used to replace if. I couldn't believe it. So I got serious and did a Google search on the use of conjunctions in the English language. When you learn different languages, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll teach you like participles and um, you know, first, second, and third person and present and past, and they compare it to the English language so you can see what they're trying to teach you. Um, so I clicked on the first website that popped up. And it was a video, and it was explaining conjunctions that went like this. Let's see where we're at on this. It said, 
Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. That kind of stemmed a whole new problem for me. Like that was the first thing I saw <laughs> when uh, I typed in conjunction. But in other words, what it was telling me is it is a conditional conjunction. In other words, if, then. If you are squirming in your seat a little bit right now, you are probably not alone. I mean, what happened to grace? What happened to justification by faith alone? Isn't that what Luther preached and we continue to preach today? Isn't this the foundation of the Lutheran faith? I guess it is time to ask ourselves if we are abiding in Jesus' commandments. First one. If you love the Lord your God, you will be with God in heaven. If you come to me and leave your father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, you will be my disciple. If you sell all your possessions and give to the poor, you will have treasures in heaven. If you leave your nets and follow me, I will make you fishers of men. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you will have a place in God's kingdom. Well, how are you doing? How many were you able to say yes to? Several of these commands are told as part of a parable where Jesus is attempting to deliver what I am going to refer to as the shock effect. Jesus is telling us that we need to be humble, modest, kind, caring, compassionate, loving, charitable, and most important, be obedient. When he speaks of laying down one's life for a friend, he is telling us to put the needs of our neighbors before ourselves. So do you meet the if requirement? This is a question only you can answer. We have definitely been blessed with the tools necessary it is our choice how or if we use them. When we hear the word of God, there are usually two sides to what we hear. We call these law and gospel. What I have been sharing with you to this point is the law of God's word. The consequences of your choices. The commandments that we struggle to meet because the standards are set too high. And the blessings if we comply. What Jesus is really doing in John's gospel is entering into the gray area of life. He is reducing all the commands established for his disciples down to one. Love. Jesus commands, love one another as I have loved you. God's laws have taught us how we are to live, but clearly stating what we are not to do while Jesus' new commandments to love speaks the message of the gospel, grace and faith. Sometimes when I visit with people, I hear them say that there was a time in their lives when they fell away from God. These are usually difficult times, such as health issues, the ending of a relationship, addiction, the loss of a job, homelessness, difficult situations with children, or aging parents, and the death of a loved one. I am here to tell you that even though you may have fallen away from God, God has not left you. So let us rewrite some of these conditional if statements that live into Jesus' one commandment to love. If you are weary, I will give you rest. If you are weak, I will give you strength. If you are hungry, I will feed you. If you are thirsty, I will give you to drink. If you are lost, I will find you. If the burden is too heavy, I will bear it for you. Again, if the burden is too heavy, friend, I will bear the burden for you because I love you and you are mine. Last week toward the end of his sermon, Pastor Ernie made a statement to you that is worth repeating. He told you this, people, 
live in the promise. So please, go out, love, and live in the promise.